Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to today's live build. My name's Mimi and I'm here from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'd love to know where you guys are calling in from as well. Feel free to share in the chat here on Zoom or in the comments on Facebook as well. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Joe, who is here working with us today as well. Hey there, my name is Joe. Um, I am also on the Public Lab team, I'm reporting in from our my home in New Orleans. Um, this call is a departure from our normal um, monthly open hour calls where we invite people from the community and other experts to discuss specific topics. Um, but on this call, we'll be uh, building Rokaku kites using materials you can find around the house. Um, I'm gonna share a link uh, to templates and instructions where you can follow along with us. Um, we are streaming here on Zoom and also on Facebook Live. Feel free to ask your questions in the chat, um, either here or on Facebook, and we will get started. Awesome, guys. So I see that Lisa's here from Sterling Heights, Michigan. That's awesome. Um, so great to see you guys coming in as we can come together virtually and build these tiny kites. So I've got two example kites here with me today. This one is built from bits of grocery bags. So those little plastic bags that you see flying so well uh, on the side of the road. And this one is built from tissue paper. So not the type that we might use to blow our nose, but this is tissue paper like you might use to wrap a gift. And these are two things that I'd recommend as options for building your kites. So what I thought we'd do is take a moment and talk about kind of what are the things that we need to build our kites? What does our materials list look like? So one of the first things that you'll need is your kite sail material. So that is going to be what creates this portion of the kite. Today, I'm gonna to be building using this piece of grocery bag because it's what I've got on hand, but there are lots of things you can use. I've got one here made from tissue paper. You can use printer paper, fabric, whatever you're able to find around the house that you think will make a great kite sail. I'd like to invite you guys to share in the comments or in the chat, what kinds of things are you guys making your kite sails out of today? Our next piece that is also going to be something that is variable from person to person, depending on what you've got, depending on what you have on hand, is going to be what we make our kite spars out of. These kite spars here are made from toothpicks and that's what I'll be using today to build my kite spars. You can also use something like a pen or a pencil. If you have plastic straws, those make great spars as well. And what we're using these for is to give our kite some structure and some stability so that we can kind of help control where it flies. Another really important thing is tape because we've got to have something that holds this all together. I really like to build it with a clear tape because it makes it nice and it looks a little bit pretty. But today I'll be using blue tape so that it's much easier for you guys to see where we're using this tape. This tape is going to be your best friend. Not only will it hold our kite together, but some of the kite sail materials that we use might be a bit fragile. Uh, and there's almost nothing you can't fix with a tiny piece of tape. It's not going to add a lot of weight to your kite. So feel free to, to use the tape that you need. Another thing that we're going to be using today is a bit of string. This is going to be used to make our kite bridle as well as our fly line. You probably can't see, but I've used a piece of black string on this kite here. It's a little bit harder to see. So today to build, I'll be using this thicker uh, embroidery floss and it's just going to make it easier for things to see. And again, it's not that much of an additional weight. So we're able to use this for our kites today. I've been using ribbon to create kite tails. These kite tails help us to fly a bit smoother and to have a little bit more control on our kite. This ribbon is what I had around my house, so it's what I'm using, but you could make your own. Uh, you could cut a strip of your kite sail material to use as a kite tail. You could put two pieces of tape together so that they're not sticky, and that would make a great kite tail as well. So it's really great that these are really flexible and you can use what you have on hand to make these kites. So if you don't have something that I'm sitting on this table, don't feel like you, you can't make a kite. And it looks like we um, on Facebook have Susie joining us from Bozeman, Montana. Feel free to comment on Facebook or in the chat um, where you are calling in from. And Glenn gives a really helpful comment 
use the lightest materials possible. Very important when flying a kite. <laughs> Yes, uh, our, the ribbon here is going to make a much better kite tail than this kite tail than this metal ruler, even though they're both long uh, and, and relatively straight, which is something we're looking for out of our kite, our kite tails. This is the lightest thing I have on hand, so it's what I'll be using today to fly. You're also going to want something that you're able to mark your material with. I've got a pencil here, a marker, whatever is going to work really well as well. And then kind of the last thing that I need is a pair of scissors. I'm using this to cut my kite sail material. And then I'll also use them to help trim down these toothpicks as I, um, as I use them to make kite spars. So something else that I have here that you may want as well is our template. So I went online and downloaded and printed this template. I've got it cut out here so that I can use it to trace onto my kite but you're able to make this um, without the template as well. One thing that I do wanna point out, if you're interested in scaling your kite up or scaling it down and making an even tinier kite are the ratios that we've got here on the, the length and the width and the height of our kite. So these kites are typically made in either a four, five, six ratio or a three, four, five ratio. And what that refers to is the height of our kite that's the six, the total height of our kite. The width of our kite is that five. And then the height of the main body of our kite, so this large main square in here, that's the four number. So you could scale this up and have a 12 inch long kite, or you could scale it down and have one that was only three inches tall and two and a half inches wide. However you change your kite, do share back with us how you're changing it. The link that we've shared in the chat here, which has the templates and the build instructions, is a great jumping off point for you to share out on Public Lab how you've built your kite and how your flight went as well. Yeah, so a great suggestion from Glenn is something lighter than toothpicks. If you have something lighter than toothpicks, that's fantastic. They suggest things like broom bristles. Those are thin and light. Um, I don't have a broom that has uh, that type of bristles on it in my home right now, but that's a great way that you can source something that might be hanging around and is really easy to come by. And those are quite light. Um, these guys have, my, my kites fly okay. They could fly a little bit better if they were lighter. Um, what's one of the things that I love about the plastic straws or the coffee stirrers is that they come in a length that's already great for a kite this small. And they're, they're pretty light as well as being easy to work with even if your hands aren't terribly dexterous. So if everybody's gotten the chance to get all their materials together uh, or if you're just joining us, welcome. And let's get started in building our small kites. So what I've got here is my kite sail material, and I've actually already folded it in half. I'm folding it in half uh, so that I can draw out what we would be, um, so I can draw out the shape that we need. If you're using your template, there's no need to fold in half. You can simply put it on and trace it, and you'll get things that are already measured and straight. What I'm going to do here is just give a quick how would I build this if I'm scaling up, scaling down, or I don't have this template available? So for that, I fold mine in half, and then I need to make a couple of quick marks on this so that I can build that same hexagon shape that we're using in this kite. So first, I need to note the six inches that are the full width, the full height of our kite. So it's a bit hard to see, but I've marked off six inches here. Then I need to mark about one inch farther down. That's where these vertical spars are going to come in and where I'm going to measure that five inches, well, two and a half because we're cut in half, but where I'm going to measure that full width of my kite body. So using again my ruler, which is one of the best things that I've got on my table here today, I'm going to go ahead and make that two and a half inches. So this should be half of whatever you'd like the full width of this kite to be, because remember that we are folded in half now. So it's a bit light, but you can almost see that I've got a pencil line there. A marker might be great if you um, would like to be able to see things more clearly when you're drawing them out on your kite. So this is my two and a half. So now to get the other half of this hexagon shape here, what I'm going to do is connect the mark that I've made at the six inch height 
with the end of my two and a half inch line. So what I'm drawing right now is this line right here when I unfold this. It's okay if your lines aren't perfectly straight. These are small enough that you'll see that it's about the length of my scissors. So when I go to cut this out, I can use my scissors to help me make sure that I've got a straight line here in case you might be a little bit less, uh, a little bit more shaky or maybe just like me and not great at drawing a perfectly straight line, even with a ruler. So now that I've got my half of my template traced on here and you can see that it, it mimics the, the shape that I have on here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Once I cut this out, I will have my full kite sail ready to go. When you're cutting, do think on what is my material that I'm using right now. If you're using tissue paper or things that are really thin, uh, you might find that they'll, they'll rip for you when you're cutting them. And Joe, I think we have a question or a comment coming in too. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, if you're just joining us, we're Public Lab, and in today's public uh, open hour call, we're building Rokaku kites using materials you can find around the house. Um, whether you're following us on Facebook or on uh, here on this Zoom call, there are links in the comments where you can build along with us um, and get uh, find the supplies list if you are um, going to be doing this along with us in the future. Feel free to put in the comments where you are calling in from. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. So now I've got my kite sail cut out and I have my template here just so I can check them against one another that I'm still doing this, you know, shape and the proportions that I need. So the next step is going to be to put together our kite spars. If you have something that is lightweight and already long enough, you can go ahead and skip this building of a kite spar step. I don't have that available. Uh, we're in a bit of a weird time now where I can't run to the grocery store and, and grab some plastic straws. But I can use the tape that I have here and some toothpicks, which are usually reserved for baking. Oh, Mimi, before you move on, it looks like we have a question from Stevie in North Carolina who um, yes. asked if you can say what the measurements are again um, and where the mark goes. So we went through it a little fast. Oh, of course, got it. So if you, I can show you along on this template because it's labeled a little bit better than I can. So when we were measuring and we'd cut in half, the first marks that I made were for this six inches. That's the height of our total kite. And I'm using this right along that fold line. So I can put this guy down here to show the same thing. So I'm measuring six inches along this fold line here. Then I measured one inch down because that's about where the full body of this kite starts. At that one inch mark farther down, I drew out half of the total width of my kite, which in this case was two and a half inches because I want my kite to be about five inches wide. The last measurement that you can do just to confirm is when I'm going to connect this point with this point and then these points right here. So when I went to connect this piece here, I just confirmed that this was four inches because that's about the height that I want for the full body of my kite. So a six inch mark on that fold, one inch down, I came out two and a half inches. And then from here, this distance here is about four inches. I used my ruler just to connect these lines so that I could make the full outline of my kite. And again, at those links in the comments or in the chat, we do have this template. If you print it full size on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, it's going to come out in the same six inch, four inch, five inch that you need. And Joe's dropping those links in again if you need them. And if you've got a pause to print your template, don't worry because we are recording this now. So it'll be archived both on Facebook as well as on the open hour page of Public Lab. Do we have maybe any more questions about our, how we're putting together our kite sails? And that's this piece here. And what we're making with this kite sail is this whole body piece that you see right here. This one here is made of tissue paper. So you see it looks a little bit different from the plastic bag that I'm using here. So what we wanna do next is build these spars that give us the structure that we need for our kite to kind of stay uh, in a form that allows it to fly. 
And what I'm doing here is using toothpicks to do that. It's the lightest weight thing that I have available. If you can get some, some sticks out of your yard that are relatively late, uh, Glenn has suggested broom bristles, which is fantastic. If you've got a, bristle, a broom, you might not notice the three or so bristles that you need just to make these spars. I've also seen people build their own kites using long roadside grasses that they've dried out. Anything you've got that is lightweight and that can be relatively straight will make great kite spars. And if you build it with something today and decide this isn't the greatest way to build my kite, I encourage you to build it again, uh, share out what didn't work and what does work with your new kite. If you follow that link that is we've dropped in the chat that contains our build instructions, that's a great jumping off point for sharing on Public Lab. How did my build experience go? So to get to building our, our toothpick spars, if you're going to be building it that style with me, this is one that I found. Um, I first actually tried to make my spars out of cardboard, and I felt that while they were lightweight, they didn't have the rigidity, the structure that I needed in order to make my spars and give my kite you know, the oomph that it needs to fly. So what I did was I took these toothpicks and I sat them on the edge of a piece of tape. Then I rolled it up like I was rolling a sushi roll or if you've ever made a Swiss cake roll. <laughs> um, I just rolled it around in that way. And that allowed me to make a spar that was pretty stiff. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I get a little bit of flexibility, which I do want out of my spars, but it's not just folding in half like the cardboard was when I first built it. So these two, the, the width of two toothpicks tends to be about the width of the kite. And so I've been using two toothpicks to make my horizontal spars here. And then it's about a little less than three toothpicks long for the top. So what I've done is repeat the same thing and then I'll trim them. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one my vertical spar here. So I'll add a third toothpick to this. And again, you can use whatever type of tape you'd like for this. You could also possibly hot glue these guys together. That would keep it um, light enough to still fly. But tape is what I've got. And I'm using blue tape today so that you guys can see this a little bit easier. So again, what I did there was lay it flat and then roll the tape around it like I was rolling up uh, yeah, a sushi roll is the best that I've got here. I now need to make two more vertical, two more spars to be my horizontal spars. And again, those are each about two toothpicks wide. So you can take your tape, uh, whatever color or type you've got, and it doesn't need to be very long. About an inch of tape is enough for this right now. So I take my piece of tape. And something that is worth noting is that when I'm putting my toothpicks down, I'm not sitting them end to end like this. That makes this center part not quite strong enough. So what I'm doing is overlapping my toothpicks. So I'll, I'll spread it apart so you can see it a little bit. Where, where it starts to taper, I have a little bit of an overlap. And I'm pushing those down together just like that, just to make sure that I've got enough uh, support in the center of this DIY spar. So then again, just so we can see, I fold this little piece of tape over right here, and then I'm just rolling it around so that I can have a little bit of, um, not a little bit, a lot of bit actually of support to this spar here. So this will be one more of our horizontal spars. And then I just need to do this one last time to make a third horizontal spar for this kite. If you build some of the other kite designs that we've linked out, not from this post, but from our, our larger mini kites wiki, you may find yourself building a different number of spars. But for this Rokaku kite we're building here, we are only in need of three spars. So these guys are just about the width of my kite. If you want things to be uh, the most sturdy, which is great and you should totally want. You can do three toothpicks here as well and then trim down. But I've been flying this way with them and I feel okay with it. Uh, but I encourage you to do what feels best or what makes your kite the most exciting to fly for you. However, this three toothpick, the three toothpick spar here that's going to be my vertical spar is too long. So what I'm going to need to do is trim it down. You can do this in a couple of ways. You can compare it to your template. You can compare it to your kite sail. 
or you can use a ruler to measure those six inches that we know is the total height of our kite. What I'm going to do is just line it up with my, my kite sail here and mark for myself, what is the total height of this kite? I want these guys to be as long as I have here. Then I need to trim these guys down because what I don't want is a, a kind of scary pointy kite with some nice spikes on the end. Um, I think that that's probably not our best option for flying. So I just trim one end and then I trim the other. If you're worried, if you're making it from toothpicks like mine that are made of wood and you're worried about splinters, you could take a little piece of sandpaper and sand this down at this time. This will be the only time that we're cutting the wood. So this would be where you might use that. And Glenn on the call in the comments says um, that he built a Rokaku kite using thin carbon fiber spars and shares a, a link to an awesome photo. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Glenn, if you might share with us maybe in the comments there too, where we might find a thin carbon fiber spar. Um, I only know of them when I purchase kites, um, but I don't know how I, I, what, what I might be able to repurpose that from in my home, but I'd love to know because I've been flying a lot of these kites and would really enjoy making stronger kites. So now that I've got my um, my vertical and horizontal spars ready to go, I can attach them to my kite. So again, this looks a lot nicer when I use the clear tape and I don't get blue all over my kite, but it's fine, I'm fine. <laughs> but I'm gonna use this blue tape and I don't need a lot of tape. For this part, I wanna use as, as little tape as possible so that I can keep the weight of my kite nice and light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my horizontal spars here so that they stretch across and at the points end at the kind of at the the intersection of these two lines here. So if we were thinking about this in terms of our template, we're placing these horizontal spars right along this line here that has our five inches. That's where we'd like to tape it up. So what we're gonna do is put our, we're gonna line everything up and then using a, as little a piece of tape as possible, this one's probably a little bit bigger than we want, but that's okay. It makes it easier for us to see as we're building here. And I'm going to put this down on the edge. You can see that there's a little bit hanging over. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and fold that around. One thing that I like is that this gives me a little bit more support and structure to this space that is, is kind of fragile, this piece of uh, grocery bag with a, a skewer on it. And then I'll go and do that same thing on the other side again folding over any excess tape on that other side. Here I've got a little bit too much on the side as well. And you're, you're able to trim if you need to, but I don't wanna accidentally cut my kite. And we're going to do this one more time to attach that second vertical spar there as well. Sorry, that second horizontal spar. <laughs> this is the orientation that we can think of it in. And if you're just joining us, um, we are Public Lab and in today's open hour call, we're building Rokaku kites using materials that you can find around the house. Um, there are instructions in the chat, both on Facebook and on Zoom um, for how to build along with us. Um, these uh, videos will be archived after the fact also. We also invite you to join um, our uh, monthly open hour calls where we invite people from the community and other experts to dis discuss specific topics. Um, our next one will be on June 1st when we will be talking about um, effective storytelling related to environmental concerns. And also if you have any sort of environmental uh, concerns, you can join us every Tuesday on our um, open call. We invite anyone to come ask any questions and connect with other people in the community who may have similar questions. Um, I'll be dropping those links into the comments. 
you, Joe. And a share there from uh, Glenn in the Zoom chat. Perhaps, Joe, you can bring that over to Facebook as well on where we can find some light, lightweight carbon fiberglass. Uh, so that could be a great thing to do if you're looking to build a, a kite that is a super flyer. Uh, those are great because they're both really, really light and they're strong. So your kite will come out a little bit lighter than if you were to use bamboo, or sorry, <laughs> this isn't bamboo, to use toothpicks like these. So now that I've attached both of my horizontal spars, I want to attach my vertical spars. These guys will run down the center line of the kite. If I were looking back at my template, I'm aligning this vertical spar with this lighter line right here, this line that is six inches long. And this is going to give us some of the main support for our kite. And this is also where we will attach our bridle. So once again, I want to use as little tape as possible so that I am not adding unnecessary weight to my kite attaching here. You could also attach these guys with a little bit of glue. Perhaps you could use a, a little bit of, you could, you could sew these to your kite if maybe you were making one out of canvas or another material. And again, when we're attaching this, I'm allowing my tape to kind of go over the top of my kite. And then I'm simply folding it back to the other side. Again, giving myself just a tiny bit of extra support and helping to um, more thoroughly flush out this point here, which can get a little lost in this tiny paper bag. And you'll see that now I've got a lot more rigidity uh, to my kite up here. And you can see how it has, you know, some of the structure it might need in order to catch that wind and fly. I need to repeat this one last time for my, the bottom half of my kite to attach that last vertical spar. So here you'll see that I'm not just sitting it down, but I'm actually stretching it just a little bit so that I can make sure that this uh, kite sail can be taut. Well, <laughs> taut as in uh, firm and stretched out, not taut as in uh, able to learn. And once again, I'm going to the back of my kite and just folding down to help and reinforce this piece. So depending on what material you're using for your kite sail, um, stretching it to kind of give myself some, some tension in the kite sail itself might cause a rip. I see things like that with our, um, when I make kites out of tissue paper. This one here actually has a tiny bit of a rip in it, but you can't even see it because I've simply covered it up with a piece of tape. Um, so if you find that your kite sail has gotten a little rip as we're attaching whatever you're making your horizontal spars out of, uh, tape is your friend. And again, we'll be recording and archiving these guys as well as we've got written build instructions at that link. So go ahead and um, take a second, pause and rebuild. Yes, Joe. And just a shout out to the people in the comments. Um, Glenn says, just a reminder, the cellophane, cellophane tape is much lighter than other choices. Absolutely. Uh, in this session, we're using a slightly heavier tape, just that way it's more visible for people at home. Um, and shout out to George and JD who say hello in the comments. Hi guys, how's it going? Yeah, so the, that cellophane tape, or you might have heard it called scotch tape, clear tape, American tape, that's what I'm using here. And it, in addition to being light, just makes my kite look a little bit nicer, which I appreciate. Speaking of nice kites, here's a place where we get to add something fun to our kites. So this plain sail is fine, but this one at least has a little bit of glitter in it. You can decorate these guys however you'd like. Um, and this is the point where if I was going to pause and maybe paint or decorate my kite, this is when I would do it. I am going to cheat just a little bit and use a sticker because it's fast, it's light, um, and it'll add something to my kite. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a sticker on here. But depending on what your sail is made of, you can use pens, you can use paint. There's a lot of different things that we're able to use to decorate these kites. Another opportunity to add some flair, as long as you can keep it lightweight, is with our tails. I've been using this thin ribbon uh, just because it's what I have uh, available and uh, I like it. I think it looks good. It's a little bit shiny if you can see that. It also matches the 
glitter that I have in this tissue paper when I'm using it. But today I'm using something a little, a little more plain. So our kite tails help us to um, keep our kite a little bit more stable when we're flying. I have been using a kite tail that's about eight inches long when I have been flying these kites, but you're welcome to shorten or lengthen that if you have uh, something else available. Um, we've got a, a note in the chat too that when you're decorating that Sharpies are a great way to, great way to decorate because they don't add very much weight. Um, that is a great one. Uh, I just don't think anybody wants me to, to watch me wear, draw a, a really ugly pair of boots with my, <laughs> my limited drawing skills. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and add my kite stream, sorry, my kite tail. So I'm measuring this guy out to just about eight inches. It's what I've been using. It, it adds a little more weight than if I use something shorter. Uh, but uh, in the couple of tries that I have uh, had to fly these guys with some different length tails, that's what I've liked. But if you use a different length of tail, or maybe you use none at all, and you find that it makes your kite fly really well, or maybe not so well, don't forget to share that back with us. Um, again, at that link, it's a great jumping point for sharing out, or these videos will be archived and perhaps you can uh, come in the comments and, and let us know how it goes. So I'm gonna trim this piece of this just because it's a little bit ratty, uh, and I like to have a little bit of shape to my tail. So this kite tail, I'm just going to add to the bottom of my kite. Again, I wanna use as little tape as possible so that I can keep this nice and light. And Glenn in the comments is saying, um, to make it fly, I suggest a tail that's seven times the height of the kite made from a garbage bag. That sounds awesome. Um, if you have that much of your ribbon available, or maybe if you're using something light, like you've uh, you know, made a thick braid from some long embroidery thread, that is awesome as well. So again here, um, as is my want with these, I've had my tape go over the edge just a little bit, and then I'm folding it around. So now that we have our basic kite together, what we're going to need to do is add a bridle. What this bridle does is allows us to attach a piece to fly the kite. So here, I've used a two-point bridle, which is not a traditional bridle type for, um, oh, the garbage bag question, sorry. Uh, uh, we've got a question in the comments from Stevie. And the question is, what is the garbage bag for? The kite body or the kite tails? Here, I've used this uh, piece of a plastic bag, just a grocery bag, in order to make my kite body, or I've used it as the kite sail here. I've used ribbon here for a kite tail, but a long piece of plastic bag might actually be a great way to get that seven times length and not add very much weight. Because if I put that much on out of this heavy ribbon, it might be a little bit too much for my kite to fly. But again, use the materials that you have available and feel free to share with us how they work um, so that we can help people to build better and better kites. So thinking on uh, this bridle, right, traditionally these kites have a four point bridle. And what that means is that it attaches to the kite at four points. If you'd like to make a four point bridle, it does fly a little bit better. I've done both and I really like that four point bridle. If you're going to use one, it's going to attach in four places, which are a little bit hard to see here, but I'm going to attach it here, 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 and here. I've used a two-point bridle uh, because I was building with a toddler when I first made these, uh, and that was about the amount of patience that I had for how long we can take to tie knots. So what I'm going to do here is that two-point bridle. This guy is a little bit harder to fly, and if maybe uh, you can spend the extra time now to add more bridle points and save time and ease later in flying, uh, that is a great thing to do. On that wiki page for the mini kites, I shared out a number of resources that include how can I build this with a different number of bridle points. So for the two points that I'm going to use, I'm gonna make one of my bridle points about halfway between the tip of my kite and this horizontal spar here. 
since I've got this dark blue tape on it, I'm going to go ahead and just mark where I would like that to be. And I'm going to do that same here on the bottom is that I'm going to go about halfway between the tip of my kite and that vertical spar. So this is something that I learned through trial and error, but is the way that I've been using to make holes to attach my fly, my bridle to this kite. So what I've got here is my handy dandy toothpick, which I already had available. And what I'm going to do is use it to poke a small hole through my kite. I'm going to poke one on either side of that um, vertical spar. And this is what I'm going to thread that bridle line through. I used a toothpick because I have one here. But if you don't, you could use a sharp pencil to make a hole that's very similar to that. Or if you're really careful, you could use your scissors and cut two small holes here as well. I like the toothpick. I had it on hand, but use what you have available. So I'm going to use this thicker embroidered Oh, so Stevie asked in the comments, do you have to go through the sail? Can you just go around the spars? The answer is yes, you can just go around the spars, but it doesn't fly as well. This kite here, I've actually not gone through the sail and I've just tied it to the spars on the underside of the kite. Ideally, when I fly, my kite would actually be facing this way and this part would be towards me and this part would be towards the sky. But when we do it and uh, we just tie to the spars, which is easier and is a great way to um, make this a little bit more accessible, uh, you're simply flying a little upside down. Not the end of the world. These guys still fly, but I have made a version of this kite where I actually go through the sail and tie to the spars there. And I do feel like I have a little bit better control on this kite than I do on this one. However, if I want my best flight, that four point bridle system, again, with one on each side of those horizontal spars is what I found has worked best. So it would be great to have a, a length that was exact and perfect for uh, building these bridles. As of yet, I don't. I've been playing with it going around. Another question from Stevie. So Stevie has asked, does the four spar system use two pieces of string? And yes, I was just uh, about to mention that here. So on this two spar system that I'm using, I use just one piece of string. I tie it here, and then a little bit later on, I tie it over here. If I'm using a four part bridle, I'm gonna tie one string here and here, and then I'm going to tie a second string here and here. And it's when I go to attach my flying line that I'm going to bring those strings together into one thing with four points. But for the two sparse, for the two point bridal system, I'm able to just use one piece of string, which is great if you maybe don't have a lot of the string material that you're using available. This embroidery floss isn't our best option for this because it is a bit heavier. So if you have thread like the type that you might use to sew a button back on, that's a great way to do it. Um, and that's what I'll typically use, but this one is a little bit easier for us to see. So I've been cutting these to be just about a foot long so that I have enough room to allow my bridle to bend and have a little bit of movement away from the kite, as well as have room to tie it off. It's been really approximate, but that's what I've been doing. So if you are going to puncture the sail and do it this way, as opposed to tying to the spars themselves, what I've been doing is actually using my toothpick as if it was a needle to help and push this through. So what I do, uh, because I can't thread this, thring, this string through here myself, it's a bit too hard. But what I do is I line up this piece of string with that hole, and then I can take my toothpick and I use it to push through this hole. And then I can pull my string through on the other side. It's just a little bit easier uh, for me personally to do it that way. And I can pull this guy all the way through. And now it's gone through. So you'll see that I brought this through from the side of the kite that doesn't have the spars on it. And I'm then going to bring it back through this other hole so that I can tie it together on this side because my bridle will remain 
on this side of the kite. So once again, I'm going to line up the thread with that hole that I've punctured and I'm using my toothpick as if it was a needle to punch through the kite and bring my string along with it. So this is especially nice for smaller hands um, or if you might not be uh, terribly dexterous. Uh, I found that this was a great way for me to be able to get this through. And then what I'm going to do is I straightened it out just a little bit and I'm going to tie a simple overhand knot here to attach this. I'm going to tie that knot twice. Uh, you're welcome to tie it another third time if you need to. And then I'll just go ahead and trim off this excess here because again, I want as little excess weight on my kite as I can. I'm going to repeat that process on the top or if I'm using a four point bridle system, I'm going to repeat that process at each of these places. When you're going through and adding, when you're making this hole to go through the kite sail material, I like to go through the piece of tape because it adds a little bit of structure, especially if you're using like a tissue paper kite like this one. When you push through the kite sail, it could rip. But when I've got this piece of tape here, it adds just the little bit of support that I need to be able to, to make this hole comfortably. So again, I'm gonna go through and make a hole on either side of my vertical spar. And while you're doing that, just a shout out to Bronwyn, who's watching on Facebook. Yay, Bronwyn. Hello. So again, I'm going to use my, my crafty needle trick, and I'm going to go through and almost sew my thread through. And then I'm sending it back. to my other side of the kite. So if you're using a toothpick that is a bit ragged like mine, it might catch your thread. That's what just happened here. So before I tie off this last piece, I wanna make sure that I have some room in my bridle um, and that it's not directly flush against the kite. I want there to be some space between where I attach the flying line and the bridle itself. So I've made sure that that room is there. I'm gonna tie this guy off again with two of those simple overhand knots. If you can make a knot successfully. <laughs> At the pre present, I'm not doing that. Again, I'm cutting off this ex excess string just so that I'm keeping my kite as light as possible. You'll see mine got a little crinkly here. Uh, this blue tape is not quite as sticky as that cellophane tape or the um, the clear tape. So what I can do is actually, this slides a little bit on here. So I'm able to pull this back out um, so that I'm still have some of that tension that I wanted in my kite. So now that I've got my bridle attached here, this isn't what I'm flying with. I need to add an additional piece of string that I can use to fly. So for this flying string or your flying line, how long you cut it is going to depend on whether or not you're going to use something called a flying rod to help and build, to help fly your kite. So I have been using a flying rod because I think that it makes it a little bit easier to fly the kites. What I've been using as a flying rod, because again, it's what's available, is a stick from my yard. I have a, a longer stick somewhere in the house that's been my favorite one so far. But anything that you've got that is long and straight, for example, a really long plastic straw would be great to use as a flying rod. These are optional, but they do help your kite to fly a little bit easier. And the reason for that is that our bodies create turbulence as we move. So when I'm walking to fly this kite, if it's just at the end of my arm, then it's experience, oops, sorry about that. It's experiencing the turbulence that's caused by my arm. But if I can add this stick to it, which is uh, you know, smaller than my arm, at least in width, it can help to um, it can help to remove some of that turbulence. And a suggestion here from Glenn 
on how we can help to avoid that slippage of the tape here is to fold that tape over the edge. So in the way that I fold it over the edge on top, you can fold over the side as well. And that'll make almost a pocket for your spars there, which can help you to fly. So for a fly line, if you're using a flying rod, you wanna make sure that your fly line is shorter than your flying rod. This guy is maybe like 15 inches long. So I'm gonna make my flying line just a bit shorter. I'm gonna make it about 10 inches long. That has been a length that works well for me. I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra. So I want it to be 10 inches total, but I need a little bit of space to fold back so that I can attach it to my bridle there. So I'm gonna to get to my 10, give myself a little fold back because I'm not the most approximate person. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. So one thing that we want from this bridle is for it to be adjustable. This one is not, <laughs> but this one is. And what that means is that I'm able to take this flying line and move it along the bridle. It might be a bit hard to see on this one, but I'll be able to show you a little bit easier with uh, your, the colored line that we're using for filming. So to make it adjustable, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of string that I've got for my flying line, fold it back, and then I'm gonna tie another simple overhand knot here so that I'm making a loop at the end of my kite, my, my kite flying line. So I've tied this and I've got this loop right here now. So what I'm going to do to attach this flying line to this bridle is go ahead and put it so that you can see here, I've got my bridle loop, or, sorry, my flying line loop around the bridle loop. And then I'm gonna take the other end of my flying line and I'm gonna put it through this hoop right here. When I pull it all the way through around this little knot, it makes a, a small loop, attaches these guys together. And also now I can move this up and down along this line, which is useful for fi finding the uh, angle that makes my kite fly the best. I'd say that if you're having a little bit of trouble fly flying your kite, moving this bridle point, which is what we call where the bridle attaches to the flying line, is gonna be one of the best ways to do so. Ideally, your kite is going to fly, you're gonna attach, if you can switch cameras, you're gonna attach your bridle so that when you're holding your kite flat like this, you end up with the nose up. Uh, there's a lot of math that you can do and explore to figure out what is the best angle, but I tend to like about like a 30 degree angle uh, on my kite. So at this point, you are ready to attach to a flying rod if you're using one or to take this for a little walk and fly it. If you're flying indoors, it's a little bit hard for me to do here. So you're going to have to, we're just going to walk through it verbally. What I'll do is I hold my kite. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the flying rod for the ease of reminding myself how I fly it. Uh, again, I'm using just simple overhand knots here. If you have uh, some better knots in your repertoire, go ahead and use them. Um, they can help make things a little bit sturdier, but I uh, don't, and, and they fly fine. Uh, these kites, that they can last if you store them well, but uh, two of mine have been lost to dogs at this point in time. Uh, so <laughs> they're, they're sturdy, but only so sturdy. So what I'll do to fly my kite is I have my flying rod here. I'm going to hold this above my head. And as I walk slowly, I'm going to adjust this. As I walk slowly, my kite will drag behind me and fly. If you've got a four point bridle system, it's going to be a little bit sturdier because it'll keep it in this. You'll find on this two point bridle that you'll, you'll see a lot of the waving along this vertical spar, which is the only one that we're attached to. But holding this and walking slowly is gonna be your best way to fly the kite indoors. If you're outside and you've got a little wind, go ahead and try to catch it. Um, it's always a lot of fun. So again, uh, we're public lab and this is it. This is the kite. Uh, you can take this and fly now if you've had a chance to build. If you're a few steps behind or maybe want to build another kite, you're able to go ahead and all of those instructions on the build link, or we'll be recording this and sharing it out as well.
Joe, do you have a, sorry, do we have anything coming in from the comments there? Yeah, I just wanted to say hi to uh, David in Livonia, Michigan, um, who said, great job, Mimi. Um, hello to JD, um, watching along in New Orleans. Um, Andy and Chelsea. Lisa is going to go out and try um, try some right now. Please take photos and share them on the link. Um, and just a reminder that coming up, um, you can join us every Tuesday for our open call where you can ask questions about environmental concerns and connect with other people in the community. Um, you can join us next month, next month on June 1st for an open hour call um, about effective storytelling about environmental concerns. Um, more information about that will be posted uh, later today. Um, I'll post links to both of those things in the comments here and on Facebook, um, as well as build instructions from today's live build. Um, but we'll stay on for a couple minutes if you have any other questions. Yeah, and feel free to drop those questions in the chat. I think the most difficult part of this is actually the flying. Uh, and I found that when I'm flying it myself or I'm flying it with uh, some of the toddlers in my life, that trial and error is our best way to fly. And unfortunately, I can't get my computer all the way outside. But if you have a technique for flying tiny kites like this, uh, if you're able to record yourself, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Uh, Stevie has asked is how long is the string again from the kite to the stick? So this, the length of this flying line, which is what we call this between the kite and the stick, is going to depend on the length of your flying rod if you use one. If you don't use a flying rod and you can get wind outside, this can be a pretty long string. I've seen folks fly these tiny kites on strings that were you know, 10, 15 feet long, and they're able to get some really great um, some, some really great flights. They use slightly different build instructions, but we've got some of those linked on that wiki as well. Here, because my flying rod is, I'm saying about 15 inches long, I haven't actually measured it. I've made this line to be about 10 inches long so that I've got a little bit more control with my flying rod. If I made this line longer than this is, then uh, it can be a bit more difficult to fly. But if you're not using a flying rod, then this can be however high you'd like for your kite to go. But the longer that you can allow your flying line to be, the farther we can remove these tiny kites from the turbulence created by our bodies and our arms, and the better your flight's going to be. And Susie in Bozeman, Montana on Facebook says that she's headed out to go try out her kite. She made hers using chip bag. A chip bag. Oh, I love this. Um, that That's is a great material. <laughs> <laughs> and it reminds me a lot of some of the solar kites that you'll see to fly. Glenn here has a suggestion for a materials list, which is fantastic if you've got some time to gather and build again. So Glenn suggests a sewing thread, uh, which is what we'll typically use, but this guy's better for being able to see. Uh, and then broom bristles as your kite spars. Uh, using cellophane tape, so this type of clear tape, you might have also heard it called scotch tape, um, and they're using a four foot long plastic tail that's made from a garbage bag. I absolutely love these garbage bag tails because the difficulty that I had with my ribbon tail was how to add length and not add weight because a longer kite tail can help us to keep our kite more sturdy, especially in windy conditions. So those of you who fly large jumbo kites or maybe are flying for uh, mapping or sensing, you'll see that your kite tails are 10, 15 feet long. Um, and that length is really useful for allowing our kites to stay stable. So Mimi, if people wanted to build these um, larger using maybe Tyvek or something that's easy to get that's, that's larger, how large do you think people could go? People build DIY kites that get pretty large. On Public Lab, we've got some research notes from folks who have built their own kites using Tyvek. And some of those kites have been like seven foot wide uh, delta, so triangle shaped kites. Um, so you could get quite large. When you're scaling up, if you want to keep with this Rokaku shape, what you want to make sure you're doing is keeping these ratios in that four, five, six, or a three, four, five ratio. Awesome. Thank you. And Glenn, in the, in the links, um, shared a great Amazon link. Uh, for building really large well, books are building big ones. Yeah. And so Facebook comments too. 
this, this shape of kite is one that you might see um, in like a kite battle. Um, these, these, are, these are kites that are often used for that, but they're much, much larger than. Uh, these are a really traditional kite shape. And it actually that name means six sides or really roughly translates to referring to the six sides of this kite. And it's a little bit different than those traditional uh, kite-shaped kites, right? The diamond-shaped kites that we see a lot. Um, but I do find this one a little bit easier to fly than those diamond-shaped kites are. But kites come in lots of shapes and sizes. Uh, we have flown uh, octopi. I've got a Peppa Pig kite that I fly regularly. Um, so I'd love to see what kinds of shapes and designs you guys come up with as well. And again, don't forget to share out. You can share in the comments and you can share as well um, back on that public lab post. And Glenn has shared with us that these Rokaku kites, uh, they are a Japanese style kite. That's where it translates to six. Um, and these are over 400 years old. They're a very traditional kite shape. And we've been seeing people flying them for a really long time um, with different types of you know, traditional papers and things like that that we can use to build these kites. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much uh, to Mimi for leading this session. Again, there's the links um, in the chat and on Facebook um, where you can join us for future calls, get more information about building these kites. Um, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thanks guys and enjoy your flight. <laughs>